Hello there everybody, Peter of England here. Um, today is the 5th of November. So remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder treason and plot. I can see no reason why this gunpowder season should ever be forgot. Infamous words over 400 years ago by an individual who tried to realise or make realise in our minds that the words fear and intolerance and oppression were not to be remembered, but justice, truth and help for your fellow man were of imperative importance. Over 400 years ago, this individual, Guido Fawkes, was hung, drawn and quartered by Parliament. And what's happening today, on this 5th of November 2019, is an individual languishes in HMP, HM Prison, Belmarsh, in London, and his name is Julian Assange. So, the nature of this video today is to bring to people's attention, worldwide, the, um, the cast of players, the dramatis personae involved in the persecution of Julian Assange. Now, the reason, in part, that I'm making this video now is that at uh, 6 o'clock this evening, London time, there is a demonstration or a protest or an appeal outside the Home Office uh, building in Marsham Street in London, scheduled to commence at uh, 1800 hours, um, and the nature of the, uh, of the demonstration or the meeting is to persuade the government to release Julian Assange. These people, in number, could range between a thousand, they could be ten thousand, but as we've seen in the past, even very, very large demonstrations with up to a million people in attendance in London usually result in no activity whatsoever on behalf of an intransigent government. And that's because of a point that most people are missing, and that is the, the Senate, or the state, as we call it in the United Kingdom, is in control of you and deems you to be nothing more than its possession on the estate. A bit like the way that a farmer would look at a cow or a horse or a sheep or any of the byproducts from these animals. Yeah? The farmer doesn't want to get into discussion with anyone about the nature and the purpose of right to life, right to the milk, right to the, the product that's derived, because the farmer in his mind, owns everything. He provided the water, the grass, the land the, the, the animal walks on. So that's very, very important for people who need to question how do we and how can we get Julian Assange released from HMP Belmarsh. So, what I'm going to try and do now is expose some of the players in this, this theatre, this cinema play, that, that parades itself as some type of justice. And unless people out there get this right, then they're never going to make any progress with the demonstration, as I say, whether it's 1,000 people or it's 10 million, they won't be listened to. So, anyone who can direct this video to people like John Pilger, who unfortunately hasn't been able to get back to me uh, because I was trying to arrange for us to meet, uh, if possible, today. Um, John Shipton, who is the father of Julian Assange, uh, possibly Jennifer Davidson, his supposed lawyer, who's operating out of Doughty Chambers uh, in London, very aptly uh, named. If you can get this, um, this video or this communication to them, then please do so, because I have some very, very important information which will, I am sure, aid in a successful release from custody of Julian Assange. Okay, so, that being said, the dramata, dramatis personae involved in the Julian Assange saga. As many of you uh, will be aware, Julian Assange first went into the Ecuadorian embassy in 2012. Now, he was um, given that, um, that sanctuary by the then president of Ecuador, a chap, chap called Rafael Correra. That all ran very, very smoothly and very, very um, 
ably, as far as Julian Assange was concerned, up until the former vice president, under Rafael Correra, became the president. And this guy is called Lenin, you got that right, Lenin Moreno. So, the now then president, Lenin Moreno, ends up being compromised by the CIA because he has fraudulent accounts, or accounts that he has sequestrated and hidden um, in incredible amounts of money in. So the CIA basically make an offer to him that he either plays ball or they're going to seize his accounts and his family's accounts and destabilise the government. So that deal came in around about April the 7th, April the 8th. Prior to that, slightly four months later, Mike Pence from the Trump administration visited Ecuador to discuss who knows what with a guy called Mike Pompeo. So we end up then mysteriously all of a sudden with a complete change of heart by the Ecuadorian president who now decides not only to cut off all internet access for Julian Assange but to withdraw his permission. This then leads to the, I think it's the April the 10th evacuation of Julian Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy in London into the hands of the security services in the United Kingdom and into a state now of of purgatory. Uh, he's 22 hours a day locked up and the main question, the main drill down here that I'm trying to present to everyone listening to this now, a Julian Assange supporter you would have to be, is that in the past eight years his legal team have got him nowhere. Yeah? The best that they've been able to do is to play a type of defensive ice hockey game. Occasionally getting smashed over the head by the system and then withdrawing for a while and trying to come up with something. The blonde lawyer that you see on most of the Julian Assange videos when they're talking outside the High Court or the Supreme Court or wherever it is or, or being interviewed is a lady called Jennifer Davidson. She works out of the chambers in London called Doughty Chambers. Now, at the moment, I'm not exactly convinced of her, um, of her sincerity towards Julian Assange's case, but I also know that within the act of the characters, the cast of the characters on the stage, there are some very, very suspicious individuals lurking. You will recall that Julian Assange had his uh, private area in the embassy bugged. You will also be aware that the toilets were bugged, the Ecuadorian diplomatic uh, area within the Ecuadorian embassy had been bugged, and it had been bugged by a Spanish company. The Spanish company was nothing more than an alter ego of the CIA. Now, it was also very strange that the lead um, law advisor for Julian Assange in 2010 or to 12, was a guy called Balthazar Garçon. Now, Balthazar Garçon was also accused of bugging um, with a Spanish company certain individuals that he was trying to get um, evidence on. Apart from that, the connection with Jennifer Davidson, being uh, an associate of Balthazar Garçon, uh, for now remains just that, a speculation. So, that's as it is. Those are the facts. We also know that the ex-president of Ecuador, Rafael Correra, has stipulated that his replacement now, which is Lenin Moreno, has done a despicable, despicable act and was involved in fraud and has been deliberately compromised by the CIA and other security services in coming to some deal whereby he has sold his soul and then delivered Julian Assange's soul almost in return. So, not good, not good news. But those are the facts we know. Other people involved in it, the QC. So, why, why I'm going through this is, people, you have to understand that the legal system, from the lawyers, through the barristers, through the judges, and through to the Department of Justice or the Crown Prosecution in England, up to the Home Secretary 
who is now a, a, a woman called Priti Patel, who took over from Saeed Javid, who signed the extradition warrant for, for uh, poor old Julian. These people are all beads on a string. They are all complicit and they're all accountable. So, what I'm trying to drill down on you today is that instead of demonstrating out of, outside um, the Home Office building in Martian Street, instead of having a one million person protest on the street, you have got to realise that the only way you'll get satisfaction is if you make these people, by name, culpable and accountable, so they are liable for anything that happens to him. Because this is the problem with the democratic organisation. When Theresa May was Home Secretary, she signed the, the order for the uh, detention of Julian Assange and his possible extradition. She then became Prime Minister, now she's out of politics, virtually, and she'll drift away into the background. And so the trick of democracy on the people is that it's a revolving door, like a revolving door at the Ritz. People go in, spin around, go out. So they're never held accountable. So what I'm saying to you is we have to start making them held accountable. But that's only part of the deal. Let's look about the wolves, the hyenas and the jackals that surround an unfortunate individual called Julian Assange. I've mentioned uh, a chap called Mark Summers. He's operating as the QC, the Queen's Council. That's a bit of a giveaway. The Queen's Council, who is, uh, has sworn an oath not to compromise any directions from the Queen and not also to embarrass the court or the judge by asking awkward questions at the wrong time, especially if it's an open court. So, Mark Summers operates out of the chambers called the Matrix Chambers in London. These are the same chambers that Sherry Blair and Tony Blair did part of their, um, their barristership um, in, in their pre, um, their pre, should we say, Downing Street days. We've mentioned Doughty Chambers, where Jennifer Davidson operates. We've also got to now, because this is what's come to my attention recently, when we had the last um, court appearance for Julian Assange, when, as you'll read in the news, he could hardly, he could hardly remember his name and he could hardly raise a defence, the judge there, district court judge at Westminster Magistrates Court, a woman called Vanessa Barreza, yeah, she basically states that Julian Assange did not or was not allowed bail because, quote, she had given his defence counsel the opportunity to ask for bail, but they had refused to ask. She then says, it's hardly surprising, to paraphrase, they're probably of the same opinion as I am, that you have a history of absconding. Okay, you could lay that charge at him, but anyone in fear of his life might try and abscond. However, he's not an escape artist. Okay? He hadn't escaped from jail, he hadn't tunnelled his way out, so... My question to the legal team representing Julian Assange, my question to John Pilger, my question to John Shipton, my question to Mark, uh, sorry, yeah, Mark Summers, the QC, my question to Jennifer Davidson, my question to the next big party of it, a uh, lawyer who should have been representing in court, a woman, you've got it, called Gareth, yeah, man's name, Gareth Pierce from, from a law firm in London just off, off Camden Town called um, Bernberg Pierce. This lady, Gareth Pierce, 79 years of, of age, seemingly refused to ask the judge for bail for Julian Assange. Ask yourself, how could that be? When Julian Assange was asked by the judge, what uh, do you understand what's actually taken place here today? He said, no, not exactly, but I'm sure my lawyers will explain. Well, I don't think they've explained too well, because he's still in HMP Belmarsh, and even if bail hadn't been granted, as 
Julian Assange is not a serial escapist. He's not a danger to society. He hasn't been uh, jailed or imprisoned for grievous bodily harm or uh, harming other people. Um, why wasn't a request made to case manage him and move him to a less, um, should we say, uh, a, a, a less oppressive confinement? Why not to an open prison? Why not to many of the other prisons where he can even act or interact with prisoners? So what they're trying to do, and let's get this right, the system. And it isn't the Sayyid Javid, it isn't his replacement Priti Patel, it isn't Boris Johnson, it isn't um, the judges in the court, it isn't the governor of HM Prison um, Belmarsh who are actively trying to kill him. It's the people who are controlling them. The puppet masters. The people who give the orders. The mandarins of power behind the curtain. Like in the Wizard of Oz. It's the hand in the glove because the reason this is done is they stay in power and they make their calls over the decades. The people like Theresa May, David Cameron, Syed Javid... Dominic Grieve, who was the ex-Attorney General, they go, they come, they leave, they pass away. Many things can happen. They get blamed in scandals and get put under the bus wheels. That doesn't matter. Let them go. They're expendable. So what we've got here is today, on the 5th of November, coincidentally, in the United States, the trial begins of a guy called Roger Stone, who is the last individual on the Mueller report conveyor belt to be used to try and bring a Russian collusion case against Donald Trump. So for those of you who are familiar with American politics, you'll know what I'm on about. For those who are not too familiar, all I will say to you is that WikiLeaks is supposed to be being used as the fall guy by the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party read the global Zionist control faction, the deep state, who control everything. The banks, the insurance, the finance houses, the political regimes, the 5G, the 4G, the bombs, the guns, you name it, the exports from China, the fact that we can't leave the European Union because it's it's going to affect adversely the Brussels agenda. That's what you're facing. That's what Julian Assange is facing because they don't want him to speak. Yeah? They want to keep him boxed in. And this message is, was a, as applicable to Tommy Robinson as it is to Julian Assange. And so if anyone wants to do Tommy Robinson a favour, also pass this video on to him, because there's something that we, he needs to know pretty quick, and this is about his entrance into the court arena every time he makes an appearance. If he keeps doing what he's doing, they're going to keep doing to him whatever they like, and it's probably not well-intentioned. So, we've got... The CIA, we've got MI5 and MI6, we've got global security interests who are confining their energies into targeting Julian Assange. Julian Assange is in prison. What I'm saying is we need a plan to get him out. I believe I have something, and for the purposes of this video, what I'd like to say is this is just the beginning. We're going to now start an active campaign to to show a way of bringing Julian Assange out of the prison system before he gets extradited to the United States of America under so-called the Exped uh, Espionage Act of, I think it's 1917 in the United States. Now, don't forget, he is a Commonwealth citizen. If Britain um, decided that they didn't want to send him to the United States, as the British parliamentarians all seem to be very, very hostile to the Trump regime. Another interesting question for you all out there is, if the British political establishment now has such a contempt and a disdain for Donald Trump, 
why don't they do a great favour to the, the members who dislike him so much by giving him the finger and saying, no, you're not going to have Julian Assange. But look who's begging for Julian Assange. It's the Democratic Party. It's all the Obama hangover faction. All the people who have been put in as sleeper cells, who are running a covert agenda behind the scenes to bring Julian Assange in. Because don't forget, Julian Assange, in a greatest part, through the organisation WikiLeaks, was responsible for informing Trump and the world about the corrupt uh, activities of Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, Epstein, Huma Abedin, the Podestas, and everyone else involved in the biggest web of corruption the likes of the world has never seen. So that's why they're punishing him, that's why they're going to kick him, and that's what they want. They want him to die. Make no mistake about it. So if the news uh, reports come along, just like Jeffrey Epstein, Julian Assange mysteriously took his own life in, 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 the, in prison. Well, wow, what a coincidence. And if you don't think things like that can happen, look what's happened in the United States with a very famous actor that most people will know of, even in the UK, a chap called Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, one of the leading um, TV Hollywood actors, was accused of... Um, uh, sexual impropriety with a few people over 10 years ago. The trial was commencing. Uh, a hearing was set for this week for the trial to commence. However, earlier in the year, one of the uh, plaintiffs died mysteriously. Two days ago, another one died. So, there is no more case against Kevin Spacey. Why I mention this is, these people will do whatever they think they can get away with to ensure that the, 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 the Punch and Judy show, the clown car, which is this corrupt and crony, destitute planet for any type of integrity, keeps rolling on down the road. They did it supposedly with Jeffrey Epstein, They'll do it with Julian Assange if they can. And Tommy Robinson, if you end up inside again, you know, I just say, make sure you don't. So I've covered most of the things. I've gone down the road here uh, in detail. So just to conclude, people out there, start to think. One thing you can do, I don't need to do it, I suggest it to you. There's a petition, I think it's called petition.org by the UK government or a, 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 a quango of the UK government. If you can get 10,000 signatures together, you can have a written response from a government department. If we got 100,000 names together, evidently we can force a question to be asked in Parliament. Why isn't anybody doing that at the moment? Have you tried it? I haven't looked. Did the, did the pie go cold? And it was not fashionable to do it now. But that's what needs to be done where you get a million signatures. We force a communication from the government. We politicise it again, but above all else, listen to me, John Shipton, listen to me, Mark Summers, listen to me, Jennifer Davidson, listen to me, Gareth Pierce from Burnberg, Burnberg Pierce, and any law firm or legal representative that's attached to Julian Assange, we're going to hold you accountable because you're fucking up you're dropping the ball and you're not giving him best advice. And from where I'm standing, at this side of the camera, you all look bored to me. And we're going to ensure that when the cards have fallen, when the investigations have come out, when the recordings have been um, replayed, when the phone logs that have been kept by the NSA are revealed, you will have nowhere to hide. So if you're watching this, good news to you. Do something about it, get in touch with me, and we are going to give them a 5th of November, which will never ever be forgotten. Thank you, hit the button, subscribe, 
Press the like, keep watching, pass the video.